All right. All right. Um, mm, all right, I'll try to figure out how to do this. Hey, and if you guys get any um, feedback from me, just let me know. I'll, I'll mute. There's some music and stuff going on. Okay. All right, Joe, I think you got – does everybody see um, the balance sheet up there? Yeah, yeah. I can see it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, it's all very self-explanatory, the balance sheet. Um, this is where we're at right now. Uh, I think maybe where some more questions might open up is when we look at the profit and loss, but I just wanted everyone to see kind of a, a baseline representation of where the club account is at right now. Okay. Um, so it looks like we're still doing okay. Um, yep. You know, we have probably at this point been hoping to add to this so we could do some stuff through our busy season, but um all right and then you want me to pull up the uh the um the profit and loss statement yes please <laughs> uh, see here. so keep in mind this is everything from march 11th our last club meeting uh up until today um so as you can see um we're kind of running at a negative uh, which is kind of assumed right now. Um, there's been a lot of things that kind of play into this number. Um, obviously, uh, the expenses that we have for discs is pretty significant. Uh, I did write out a check representing Tom uh, Usselman's um, ice bowl donation to Second Harvest Food Bank. That check was sent out and mailed yesterday uh, uh, to uh, Tom's contact at Second Harvest Food Bank. Uh, and that was in the amount of 27.86, as you see right there. Um, right. There's been a lot of work going on, um, and the 701.85 is one thing I wanted to clarify. Um, I know Josh is here and maybe scratching his head at that number because that's not all stamps.com and you, um, things like that. Uh, as you may recall, we had a $300 anonymous donation, which we all know was from Rob Lyons. Um, Rob's business account, which that check was drafted from, the account actually changed before I cashed the check. So the club was actually charged a $10 chargeback fee in addition to having the $300 taken back from the club's account. Um, so that 701 includes $300 that was taken back out of the club's account uh, and went back to Rob's whatever business account. I contacted Rob about that. Uh, he said he's going to make things square. Uh, he's going to actually send over the money today via Venmo. Um, so that 300 will be coming back to the club. Um, so just just wanted to keep you all uh, in the loop with that. Okay, Joe. Yes. Um, also, I'm still sitting on uh, Sugar Creek Am League cash that I have not yet deposited of $1,284. Okay. That, so takes us to, that takes us to a profit right there, guys. Yeah, that, that wipes out the <laughs> negative. Good. Okay. And, Joseph, I don't know if you saw the email, but we've got a check coming from DGU for around 700 and some change uh, for memberships okay. for about a month and month and a half. Oh, perfect. Are you, are you getting those emails? Uh, I've been having a lot of issues, to be honest with you. Um, my my – um, I think I need to figure out a way to – add certain email addresses into my not junk uh, folder. Um, it, it moves a lot of those into my junk folder and I end up combing through them and finding them maybe a few days after that I've actually received them. Um, so I'm sure that's where it's at. Got it. There was also an email uh, recently forwarded from BT about our uh, PO box account that needs to be paid. And um, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at that one yet, but we need to settle up with them if we want to continue yes. to hold it. Um, I'm going to need to call them, it looks like, because I tried to do it online, and for some reason, even though I'm inputting all the correct information there, uh, it's not finding uh, that P.O. box associated with Charlotte Disc Golf Club Incorporated, 
uh, our business name. So I'm going to call them and figure that out. Uh, we have until the end of the month to make good on that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Joe, this is around the time of year we need to start thinking about insurance too. Okay. Um, so um, make a note, but um, we want to make sure we get it paid <coughs> when it comes up. Um, I think we're still right now planning to have um, to have the Bailey Road Youth Camps, um, which is you know a source of income for us and um, some club members. You know they get paid to run the camps, um, but uh, we they they check that and if even if we run the camp if our insurance is you know lapsed or whatever, which has happened a few times, um, then they won't pay us. So I'll I'll try to find. I'm not sure if it was on my old work email, but Brian will have, you know, the, the contact and stuff. I, I think it might be on my normal email, but we'll uh, just, just remind me, but we need to see when that, I think it's probably late July, early August at this point. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's good to think about it now and to start thinking about, um, you know, how, you know, they always ask, you know, do we have more members? Do we have, you know, any other, you know, things you want to add, you know, so it's just good to think about it now. For sure. Thanks. Um, and also, I guess we need to think about uh, time to do club taxes as well. Um, that's coming around the corner as well. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. <laughs> I'll, I'm trying to spend as much money as I can. <laughs> I see that. I just uh, I can't wait to get that stack of receipts from you. <laughs> it's uh I got it I got it all right here in a in a giant That's folder. Lucky. Awesome. That's lucky. That's lucky. That's lucky. <laughs> oh yes, it's broken. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions about the numbers that I have on this sheet so far? Uh, of course, with exception uh, of the Sugar League that's not there and money from DGU that's coming in. So basically, our the balance um, that we have is still thirty thousand dollars of that is for RL. Is that correct, Mark? Yes. Cool. So we're sitting on we're we're clear about what thirty seven thousand and change. Is that is that correct? That's correct. All right. Sweet. Okay, um, let's move on. Uh, I'll stop sharing here so we can uh, see our pretty faces. Um, so what do we want to talk about next? We got uh, our, any, any reopening plans we want to talk about or, um, you know, or we can talk about course stuff. I've got some uh, membership stuff that we can go over. I've got some photo for us. Just to knock this out real quick, right now we're sitting at 464 members. Uh, everybody that signed up, the packs have been fulfilled. we got a full inventory. Um, so whenever leagues start up, we've got pens, we've got this, we've got everything ready to give out to the league directors and give them their stuff. Um, another thing about membership, I was thinking about this and you know, along with the DGU conversation that we're kind of going through over email, I started thinking about DGU and, and if we really need DGU. Um, and this, I guess, would be a question for Matt. Matt, is there any way that we could host club membership registration through our own website? Um, and set up a portal where we could pay by, you know, online registration, keep an inventory list of them, email blasts basically everything that we do through DGU, but just do it in-house and prevent or keep a little money in-house from, from having to pay the fees. And yeah. also save our members a little bit of money as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, I'm pretty busy lately. I don't know if I have time to check into that. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm <laughs> like 99% sure that that's, that that's definitely possible. Uh, I just need to figure out how much it's going to cost and then like the, the part integrations because there will be some costs associated with it, I'm sure. And there's always going to be some kind of credit card charge, you know, credit card sure. to get their um, money. But I can look 
into uh, figuring out a like the best viable option that is both easy to use and uh, will save us money. Um, out of curiosity, I don't know this offhand. How much money is the DGU charging per membership? I think their fee per registration is around two dollars and some change, two sixty, three dollars maybe at the top level. So okay. yeah, the, you know, the members are, are taking the brunt of that. They're having to pay that, and um, I'm not sure if DGU charges us a fee. I think they just charge, they just take the money generated through the member fee when they sign up and take that money. But I don't think we pay them any fees. It's just the members when they sign up, they have to pay the additional money. So, you know, we could add that benefit and save them a little bit of money. Okay. Um, nothing wrong with you at all. Everything works fine with them, but just looking at saving, saving us a little money, a little extra income. Okay. It's, 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 it's a valid point. It's, it's, well, it's a valid point for sure. But I mean, like Matt said, if we, allow them to use a credit card, that credit card is going to get their percentage, which is usually just under 3% of the thing. And then again, I mean, if we have to sink a whole bunch of money in this, you know, right now we're getting the full membership and DGU makes, I think it's less than 3% is what DGU takes. I, Josh, you would be better off speaking to that. Um, but there's definitely costs to it. So it's the convenience. Absolutely. And of if it DGU, doesn't make sense money wise, then I say we just stick with DGU, but but uh, I believe the fee is around two sixty per player uh, per registrant. Mm -hmm. So you know so that's that seems we've got about ten percent. That's that would be if that's correct. And yeah, it's twenty five bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. So right. that would definitely be a ten percent fee. And yeah. All right. So uh, another question is, what other benefits are we getting using DGU? So that way, I like I can make sure that that benefit that we're getting is replaced with a solution if, if I can find one. Well, one ben one benefit is that you don't have to only rely on on um, Matt. Right. I'm not saying that in a, in a, as a slight. I'm just saying yeah. we, you have a you have a whole team of people potentially that solve issues with something going down. You know, well, usually once it's set up with WordPress, everything is always kind of updated, um, and it's all it's. I mean, it's been it's a platform that's been around for like 15 years. So. It's, it's a pretty solid platform and the people who develop the solutions, um, you know, they're probably the ones that, that I'll look at are probably on average between five and 10 years old and they're established businesses. So not just like some like weird plug-in kind of deal, but yeah. Right. And, and obviously, you know, security, I mean, we're asking memberships to put a credit card into our website. Um, you know, so I would think that would probably be one of the biggest you know, whatever the, I mean, if, is it a plug-in Matt or is it something that. Yeah, so, so it'll be a plug-in, but I'm sure it'll rely on some external platform like Stripe or some other credit card, like third party, you know, very well known. So it's not going to be like the, the plug-in themselves aren't the processing. They're kind of like the interface to the processor. Right. So we'll probably have to set up an account with either, I'm, you know, I'm sure a lot of them, I don't know if they still use Stripe. Um, and there's probably a couple others that integrate with it as well. So mm -hmm. I'll look into um, that. Uh, what about email um, integration? Like, how does that work with DGU? Is it like, do we need to, do we want to be able to send out emails through our web portals? Do you like the web, like log into the website? Is that kind Ideally, of we would like to send out an email blast to the membership. So uh, we would like to have a list of the registered emails and then be able to send a blast out to those guys with any club information okay that is one thing that ggu offers us that what i think we would like to keep and yeah if we can't keep that that would you know be a detrimental factor to the, the new part of it josh where are we at with memberships versus last year you said 460 current 460 current i don't have the numbers as where we stood last year at this date um i would say we're pretty much on par if not maybe a little ahead we had a really mm -hmm. good you know, first quarter, um, and then things have slowed down a little bit. We had a, a nice little uh, burst when we got the Lunas and, and, you know, put the Lunas out there, and I think they've been selling pretty well in another round. Another thing about membership is another round has not reported any sales in two months or so. So I would think, and I asked Kyle for the information today, hopefully uh, to have it for the meeting, but he said he could not get us that today. So I, I do not have the information as the how many memberships they've sold and, and where we stand as far as income from 
uh, another round of memberships sold, but I think we're probably sitting at, you know, 30, 40 memberships from another round that still need to be entered and, and the income from that as well. Where'd we end up last year? Total, total last year. Oh, last year. That's a great question. I do not know that at the top of my head. Ballpark. Like 560 something. Yeah. I thought it was just under 600. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. good. That's, that's healthy for what situation we've got going on. That's great. Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, Josh, I got a question. Yes, sir. Last time I checked DGU when I could still access it, I thought it said we were at 470. No, I checked it today at around noon or so, and we were at 464. Um, so that should be pretty accurate. Uh, I know DGU was switching, and Dave George can fill us in more on this, but they were switching from the store platform as more of a focal point as opposed to the registration platform. So um, I noticed when I went on to the club's website today that the, one of the links that we have on there to sign up for DGU is not active anymore. One of them is, we've got two. We've got one at the very bottom of the page where it says sign up to be a member. And then on the join column at the top of the page, if you go click on that, it gives a non-active link. All right, so I can fix that. About the two website. seconds when we get off this call. So the first, yeah, the yeah, first link I've is. I've got a couple other things about the website for later on. Uh, okay. Later on in the meeting, I've got. Uh, I went through the entire website today, just checking everything out, and I've got a few things to touch on about that. But um, as far as the, the registration, um, I think we're we just need to fix that one link, and then we should be good on the the website at least. First link on DGU is appears to be operational. Four hundred and sixty-four members listed on DGU right now. Correct. Yeah which is a really, really great number. That's and, good. and that was one question I did have for you, Josh, and you already answered it. I was hoping we got our order in with Discraft early enough to get the Lunas. So I'm excited to hear that we did get those before they had we to shut down. Them. Yeah, they were delayed yeah. by a long time, at least a month and a half or so, but they finally sent them in. So I don't know if those guys are fully operational in Michigan or not, but at least we got our stuff. They are not, dude. They, they are just starting to open back up and – I can't imagine <laughs> the glut of orders that they're probably under right now. I, I believe it. Yeah, we were really expecting to have our order before they shut down mm -hmm. um, because our, our due date, our ship date was three days, two days maybe before they were they actually shut down. So mm -hmm. they kind of dragged their feet on our order, but um, right. at least we have now. That's the benefit another of – round, Another round does have Lunas in stock, so um, – I think they've got about 15 or so. We'll see how those sell, and hopefully that'll be a driving factor. Josh, with us being Charlotte, I'm I'm positive that that uh, highly motivated them to ship our order to get that into uh, <laughs> their competition's backyard. <laughs> and so, and uh, Dave, 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 to answer your question, we had 566 in 2019. Wow, we are killing it right now. That's great. Up by six. <laughs> I know that tournaments are starting back up. It seems like people are register or like promoting and registering for tournaments in the upcoming months. Now, is the only one that we have like as a club sanctioned tournament as of right now being the Clash? Yeah, that's the only one I'm aware of. The Unless the, I mean, we have all the, um, okay. we have the, we have the, uh, all the another, or, uh, another round uh, tournaments are still out there, right? They just, or they didn't cancel the whole series, did they? No, they haven't canceled everything yet. Um, they're just kind of waiting, to, you know, to see how this, uh, COVID situation resolves itself, and then they'll make an official announcement of where to pick that back up. But all the dates are still anchored in. Yeah, and I think. Sorry, my, my main concern was just like, because I, I was talking with Kyle way before this happened about like sponsorships and everything, and me and Chuck had like all sorts of stuff planned that's all been obviously canceled because the tax isn't happening. Um, and so I didn't know, because he never reached out saying it, he wanted to reschedule or do anything, so I'm assuming that's not going to happen. So, from my perspective, the main club event would be the Clash, as well as the Pro Tour, as long as things are still good coming back, correct? 
Yes. The only tournament I'm seeing on the PDGA currently is the Carolina Clash on October 2nd and the Disc Golf Pro Tour Championships in October 6th. So October 2nd through the 4th and then October 16th through the 18th. Those are the only two PDGA events currently listed in Charlotte on the PDGA tournament list. That's it. Okay, and Dave, Dave, that's what I thought too. I just wanted to make sure that from like a point as well as like trying to get sponsors. I know it's gonna be a little rough after everything opens up, but I, I just wanted to make sure it's like things move forward. Those are like the two main of EDGA sponsored events. Yeah, those are those are I think the two focus tournaments. All right, what do we want to talk about next? Courses. Okay. Those. <laughs> All right. Um. Since we got Ethan taking a stroll, we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, Horn's Nest and Kilborn. Um. So the the board saw this email, but Ethan didn't. It's one of the reasons I had him on the on the um on the phone call. We got it uh, recently, but um, they're making some changes to Kilborn uh, right at the uh, the the street facing part. Um, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but it looks like they're going to cut a bunch of trees down and then re replant the whole street with. Uh, more decorative, I guess. I don't know. Um, so at at some point, that'll affect hole one, at least, um, for an amount of time. I don't think it, from the email, it sounded like it would be a permanent thing, but we don't also know, also don't know what, um, what they're going to do. I mean, if they put a fountain and a bunch of, you know, uh, azaleas out there or something mm -hmm. it might not be a place where we can have a, a disc golf hole I, you know so I don't I don't know exactly what they're planning on, on doing for the, uh, the the front of the street um, so that being said um, the new hole um, 17 might become important but also might be something that we can get uh, parks to pay for um, if if hole one is affected in some some way um we might be able to get them to um, pay for the concrete or whatever especially if we have to add another hole or two um so it's just something to think about um instead of you know pouring that right away we might might hold off and just kind of see where the parks parks is at with their drawing of the the new layout before we uh before we go ahead and do that and spend the labor and, and money to do that ourselves and when we might be able to get the parks to do it all. Yeah, and it sounded like they were willing to work with you too. I mean, I really was impressed with them, you know, wanting you to be involved in the planning. Now, obviously it depends on how that plays out, but still it was it was nice to see they, they included you. Yeah. Will it impact 18 as well, Mark? So, I mean, that's the, I, I don't know. I mean, it was kind of vague, you know, the community voted that they wanted to have a better uh, view of the park or something. You know, I don't, I don't even know what that means. So I don't know where they, you know, do they want to have a view of the rundown tennis courts or, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I don't, I don't really know what they're thinking. Um, I, I know I'd heard um, from the park director that they were, getting money together to totally redo the bathrooms. Um, so that might be a part of this whole thing, you know, uh, but he, he didn't, I don't think he knew about this street thing. Like I don't think, that, I don't think the, the people in charge of the parks knew about that because we've seen the little white dots on trees and the flagging and all that for um, that came, they did all that in like 2000, right, right around world's time. Um, so, you know, they've been thinking about this for like two years and the parks, people in charge of the parks, um, you know, didn't really have wind to all that. So I don't know if the, the both projects will get rolled up together. You know, the same thing with the invasive species that that didn't have anything to do with the, 
the park directors or the, su the supervisors, or it, it's a totally different park department that came through and cut all that stuff out. Um, so, but anyway, so just as far as timing goes, uh, does that sound okay, Ethan, as far as timing on, um, on 17 there? Especially if we have to change something, you know, I don't, you know, if 18 drastically changes, I don't know much more land is out there, but there might be something else we can do in, in, in the park too, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I've got a couple of ideas we can work around, but I mean, yeah, I, I, Dave, uh, Dave Weaver reached out to me to get, you know, the signs, uh, put out a little bit confusing, some you know, disc golf roads were and some, some of those baskets have changed around. So, um, I got him all new updated signs with changed layout that you and him had kind of talked about putting eight and nine and kind of split old 15 long and making it um, new 13, 14, kind of got him that uh, worked out. So he said he was going to go update those signs. So for now, it's, you know, good for the 18, but we also have nine, which, I mean, I don't know if it's a terrible idea or a good idea, but you could potentially turn that into a par four. Um, like, I don't know how iconic eight and nine really are, but you, you guys would have to – Everybody would have to be the judge of that, but it would be a really cool par four, I think, if you took the basket off of the that, that little tiered tower. But then you, you, you know, I mean, I don't know, you're making them an A and B anyway, so it's kind of, you know, uh, a side hole. So I don't know. Yeah. That, so just for everybody that watched that video in the, the video in the, we, we transitioned from Kilbourne over to Hornets Nest real quick. So um, yeah, that's something that we can talk about. I think there's a, uh, were, were, you about, were you talking about Kilborn? Yeah, I was talking about Kilborn at first with the T pad there at, at 17. <clears throat> um, not not actually pouring that until we see if the park will actually do all the all the stuff. So we can talk about okay. Hornets Nest. Um, we did have some stuff that we didn't have time to finish for the Pro Tour event last year. I hadn't really been working out there. Just um, well, we couldn't get in for a while, and then you know, I'm yeah, people are just stuck at home with our kids and stuff when you know so it's just tough until things free up a little bit <clears throat> um but i will get out there with ethan there's a couple other folks that want to um be involved in in that and so that's all it's tough because we can do a bunch of stuff now but we know that that greenway is going through and um if we do anything if we make any effort to make changes they're going to put baskets and tee pads where the greenway is going through it's sort of like a waste of effort, especially when the park has said that they'll um, assist in creating new fairways. Um, so I think any work, um, there's a few things we can, we can do for the pro tour that won't in, be interfered with, but I think the rest of it's going to be kind of planning for the future for after this greenway goes through what's, what's the new layout going to be. And I think that's, um, uh, and I think it makes sense just for it to all be on the uh, on the right side of the road with uh, eight and nine being um, alternate holes. So can we can we make a super advanced or gold level course that we can keep in the ground all the time, or at least an option um, that plays eighteen holes all on one side of the road? Um, it just there's couple issues you know with eight and nine eight there's just something about the creek these days it, it wasn't wasn't like that but something's changed I don't know if it's all the construction up river all the new um housing developments but anytime you know right now if you went out there you wouldn't be able to play eight right and we had that same issue during worlds um and it makes a course like um you know R.L. Smith when it comes back you know if you get a flash flood you pretty much have to shut down around and so to have that risk at one of our premier courses it just makes sense i think to have 18 holes that are free of um rivers forming and then um you know so that that's sort of the thought process be behind um making um eight and nine at yeah. Nest. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah. but as far as layout goes um I, I've worked with the parks a little bit to you know, the, um, the greenway, 
around and be a little bit more flexible. All right. And, uh, to be more flexible with the greenway. Um, and I have to go back out and have a market just to make sure um, they're not getting uh, getting too close one way one way or the other between some of the holes that they're going to work work behind and that they're keeping um, you know some of the integrities of integrity of what we want to want to keep. If not, then we have to think about something different with some of those holes. So, anyways, just for everybody that's watching the video, it's going to affect basically um, holes. Uh, Oh, if you if you consider one through nine existing, then it would be like ten through thirteen. You know, um, you know those numbers will change in the future, but it's gonna ten, 10 through thirteen and a uh, whole eighteen is gonna affect. So, and and potentially seventeen a little bit. Um, so that's where the greenway is gonna go. Um, and then we got Tony on the phone, so I'll talk about um, Idlewild. So we've been doing a bunch of work out of Idlewild. Um, Tony's got a good crew that um, he's put together <clears throat> and so we've been going out and um, uh, I, I'd say that Idlewild Wild's probably a, a maybe an intermediate level course and so we've been trying to <clears throat> throw in a little bit more you know kind of like soft advanced uh, stuff just just to um, uh, drag out maybe some scoring separation there for when we when we run tournaments and so we've added um <clears throat> at this point we've added um four long teapot tee pads um and a couple long basket locations um nothing we're not trying to make any gold holes um doesn't really fit with the course um but you know at adding us a little bit you know taking our pars from 250 to the 330 kind of range um or our, our, you know, our par three kind of distance um, is what we're we're looking at doing. We might have another hole or two, <clears throat> um, so that'll be a, a concrete expense in the future um, if we go ahead with all that. Um, yeah, and the great part about those holes is like when we're we're making improvements to make more advanced levels, we're leaving the option for the shorter pads as well. So mostly, even though we've changed like one pin position. Um, the other things are just like adding T pads. So basically you're adding longs, but the shorts are still there because you can still play the short pads if you would like. So good options for if you want to play the shorts or the longs. Course is yeah. looking great. I've been playing it a bunch. Um, <laughs> thanks, Tony. Thank Lots you. of good work. But one thing I want to talk about as we're making all these changes, because it's happening right now, Kilbourne, Hornet's Nest, uh, Idlewild, um, is we need somebody well one obviously as soon as the changes are permanent they're there we need to update the t signs signage is so important um when you're playing a course and i'm finding that uh the udisc app is not being updated either and i don't know that that's a club initiative or not i think it should be because again it just it it increases the overall pleasure of a round when you're playing if you're using those tools which are very widely used out there so just something to think about is that I love all these changes, but as soon as they're there and we know they're going to stay, uh, let's get a T-Sign updated uh, and then let's get a uh, U-Disc updated as well. If, so if I update U-Disc, because I did that, I did that a while back for uh, Kilborn during the Clash tournament. I think last year I just played it and kind of updated it. And then it's sent and I think Kyle or somebody had to submit it. If I do that through U-Disc, will U-Disc automatically like approve it? I'm not sure how the process, how that process works, because I can I can do that through UDISC, but is it something they have to approve? Great question. Wish I knew the answer. Yeah, <laughs> I've never yeah. done it. I don't know. I've I've been they using do. the app more and more, um, so that's a great. I'd love to know the answer too. Yeah, I did I that. Yeah, I did that. I did that once, and and I think Kyle, because he made that layout, he had to approve it, and so he approved it. But uh, I've never done it myself. I'll give it a shot and see what happens. Cool. Yeah, it's it is a tough thing because. <clears throat> um, because like a course like um Kilborn with so many basket and tee pad options, um you, know, you, you might go into if you go into Hornets and S and Udis, you might find fifteen different layouts and someone someone might put in a layout where they just really don't like a certain short hole or they don't really like a long hole, you know, and so they're gonna they they just 
do this or that. You know, so it is tough, but but you're right. We should have some sort of. It would be great to have a person that was in in charge. You know, we we talked about this for a long time with Disc Golf Course Review. I think if you go to Disc Golf Course Review, and you go to Idlewild, you probably still see um, the T areas with just that are dirt with flags. You know the pictures. So mm -hmm. it would be really good if we had one person kind of dedicated to you know, a disc golf course review too, making sure that they work with Tim, the owner, to, to delete all the old pictures, add in new pictures, um, you know, set, you know, work with the course directors or me to like set, you know, here's a long layout, here's a short layout, here's a, you know, worlds or where, worlds layout and the right colors and all, you know, cause I think, I think a, if someone would come to Charlotte, they'd find that the courses look fine and there's a lot around, but then the information online is kind of hit or miss. Um, we just haven't really had anybody that's been focused on, you know, someone will do maybe, you know, someone might do Kilborn or someone might do Bailey or something just because they want to, but but then all the other ones go undone. So, hey, so, so to, based on the, uh, the signage, I mean, I think if we can go ahead and establish some sort of, yes, yeah, some sort of channel where, the course directors themselves are made. They can contact me directly. I know I've been in touch with Brad Ramsey in the past, and um, obviously, Tony Atkins is um, at Scrappy, and then obviously, you making some changes at Idaho, so, or rather, Kilborn. So, um, I guess we can, but yeah, you know, sort of channel to, to where the course directors reach out to me. To made. So, I read, I did um, give a read up to these guys three times. Um, update everything at Hornets while we're doing the little training day and the, you know, within a week I was able to get you know every course on it as, as well as the two holes that are kind of the tweeners so um, it's just it, it's take, it's for some of it a little longer because some of the files obviously that we have in Dropbox are just PDFs and so if it's just a PDF it's a little bit more than just you know Photoshop to be able to um, create or you know create a completely new hole. So kind of on some of those um, pre-made templates since it's not already, it's not like Illustrator or, you know, like a Photoshop file for, for some of the um, older stuff like itself. So that one took me a long time. But if anybody can just get in touch with me, I'll be able to get it knocked out pretty quick. You know, a single hole or two is a single day type of thing. Just make, make, you know, yeah. so. um, Matt, is there a way that we could have like a, um, you know, maybe somewhere on the website in the contact area, like if there's, you know, like issues, like, hey, for signage issues, like if someone comes up to something and just notices something's wrong, like, I mean, I was, I played, I played Nevin um, two days ago and went through, and, you know, I noticed there were like signs that had been taken down and like moved, you know, to other parts of the course or just so I replaced, replaced them, but people have been playing, no one reports, hey, the, the sign on hole eight's gone, you know, but is there a way we could do that for, um, hey, there's a tree down, you know, uh, a reporting mechanism on the website, and then that would go to, you know, my email or something, or, hey, I don't think this sign is correct, like it says it's yeah, in the I mean, long, but it's in the, you know, and then, it, then they could just send an email, a quick, like, you know, some sort of notification that goes to... Yeah. Okay. So like, so basically like right now we have like the general contact form. What I could do is below that put like, if you have a specific issue related to course maintenance or signage, fill out this contact form, which is a more specific thing. And then I can have it routed probably. I think. Okay. Yep. That should uh, be a problem. It, and then another issue that we have is that, you know, we went through and made things like as good as we could make it for worlds, but we still have all the work that world stuff around a lot of it around. So even though we've moved baskets for the pro tour event, I, I think we went through Kilborn. I mean, the Hornets Nest, got rid of most of them, but in other places, like if we move a basket at Idlewild or we change a hole, then there's, it still says 200 feet to the basket, even though the basket's 80 feet farther, you know? So those are things that we forget to do. Same thing with like the mini marker arrows, you know, is it, 
pointing to the right layout or even what we want it to point to anymore. You know, those things are um, probably not accurate on a lot of courses now, um, yeah. especially with baskets being back and forth. Um, so that's something just to think about as you're playing and, um, and we can just communicate back and forth to each other. Anybody watching this uh, call can just uh, get, get with board at uh, board at charlottegc.com. Um, you know, if they have questions or if you want to volunteer to be someone that takes pictures and uploads inf information in either U disc or disc golf course review to help us keep all of our course information um, accurate. Same thing with um, signage or uh, like direction sign, you know, maps, whole, you know, course maps. Um, but, um, and then uh, I haven't talked to Brad in a week or so, a couple weeks. Um, he needs help move. He needs to move a couple tee pads and then frame some out. So he'll have another five or six tee pads he wants to pour to, to make more of a gold level course out. And he's got some layout changes. So there will be signage updates um, out there for both the long, long tee boxes and also the, like I said, he, I don't know exactly what it is, but he changed the flow of some stuff. Um, and, and we're also trying to, add a couple holes so that we can do do something. Um, there's some stuff I might want to get rid of, you know, and he's so got, we add stuff. That's he's, got big, he's got bigger problems than that, Mark. That, oh, what happened? That storm that rolled through two weeks ago oh, yeah, yeah. devastated that place. There are six huge trees down. That It looks like weeks of chainsawing, dude. Yeah, that's up to the – parks to do so you know he's been working with them and and um i'll keep getting with the, they know that there's no pushback they said that they'd take care of it it's just you know there's a lot going on with yeah you know, i don't know if they're at full staff and and all this other craziness so um i, I think it's just him staying on the people he needs to stay on and and then also managing relationships because he you know, he, it's their job to make this course safe, but he also has to, he also has to make sure that that, um, that he's keeping a good relationship there with the park park people. So he's I don't think he's he's trying not to um, uh, bug them too much. Just to, you know, so I'll uh, I'll see where he is with with um, that. I forgot that that had happened. He's definitely doing a great job of man managing relationships. I played around with him in March, actually in April, and uh, Parks guy came back there on first name basis. I mean, they are basically like, you know, they're they're buds now. So him and Richard Ronimus has actually come around and has, <laughs> has seen the error of his original ways, and I think he's been helping uh, uh, Brad out a, sh a ton. So those guys are definitely making a ton of good progress. I hate – that that storm set them back so far because it was uh, – it's bad, man. It's all right. We got – you know, he was trying to push for the CAC. So, you know, I mean, right now there's no big tournaments or anything. So, he's got it, – it's a shame because, you know, the course sort of had developed a rap. And, um, and, and I don't know if it was necessarily fair, but um, – you know, with all the work, it would have been great to showcase to kind of the world what what he's started to turn that thing into. Yep. Um, so. Um, we'll do it next year. You know, it, 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 like, I'm just letting everybody know because there's uh, you know, cost involved. There's cost involved. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that stuff when it comes up. All right. Um. Uh, R.L. Smith, uh, I think they're getting close to finishing all that, but then we, we got word that there was a uh, another greenway that they want to put through all the stuff that we had redesigned. So I haven't been able to get out there when the course is closed. Um, they, they sent me some information. I told them they're crazy. They redesigned a little bit. Um, and uh, the greenway, um, so I'm just trying to make it impact the course as little as possible where um, and, and where it impacts the most is places we, we don't care as much. Um, so 
So anyways, there's that kind of, that stuff's up in the air a little bit. I walked with Wit and CTP, we walked all over the course, looked at some new land, had some different options, maybe even to finish um, along the top of the hill where the 21 hole salute, maybe the, where the 20th hole was, you know, cut down to the tires. So we're, instead of finishing on 18, maybe have a few more holes after that, just give a better sort of a loop to the course. Um, and then, you know, he's got, we got some par fours and fives out there I think the course was only like a par 56 or something at the time, you know, so we're looking at even, you know, making it bigger, um, just working around this, this greenway. And I don't know, Jim, do you have any insight to, to all these capital improvement projects that the parks got money for all these greenways? Is that, I know the DOT is having issues um, for North Carolina. Is that affecting Mecklenburg County or do they have the money and they're going to go with it? Go with these um. things. Uh, the, answer, the answer is I don't know about the county because, I mean, I work for the city and the county is separate, so it doesn't look like their funding has been, uh, uh, hasn't been minimized at all. I think their issue is going to be more staffing. It's going to be more the people getting, getting the work done. Um, I do know that one of the issues with Kilburn was that, that the project is a city transportation project. It's a streetscape project. That's a city project, but it's going to a county property. So a lot of that, not miscommunication, but the lack of left hand, right hand, is going to be the two different government agencies working, which is part of why the parks probably people didn't know as much about what the intent of the street cape, streetscape project was going to be. So you don't, you don't foresee any, if there, you know, if there's a, other than just normal government, stuff taking longer than it than it's supposed to you don't see because you know if they do the this greenway thing they're just going to hire a company to do it you know it's not going to yeah. be the park staff that's going to do it so yeah no no the, the the capital projects are all that's that's money that's been budgeted and set aside it's either bond money or it's capital improvement money it's not going away so the work is going to happen the only thing will be affected potentially would be the timetable Okay. I mean, this is all, it's all bad news, but it's all kind of good because in all these projects, they've come to me and said, either, you know, well, we, we're going to, either they say it or I say it, the first thing I say is, well, okay, you're making all this change changes. How are you going to help us put in new holes elsewhere? You know, where are you, you, you going to give us the land in a place that you're not going to turn into a basketball court in five, five years? You know, where are you going to, you know, what kind of machinery are you going to help get us or, you know, what kind of access are you going to, you know, bulldoze for us so we can get our own trucks and stuff in. So, and they've all either been, that was like their first line is like, hey, we're going to do this, in, but we're going to help you out because um, we don't want to lose the amenity or, yeah, we can, we can work with that and, you know, we'll work with redesigning it and also getting you some machinery out in the case of, Hornet's Nest, they're like, we don't want to interrupt play at all. We don't want to have to shut this course down. Um, so we, you know, when we get a plan, I think they're going to help us put in new stuff so that when they build their, their greenway, we'll still be able to play disc golf around without closing any holes down. Um, so, you know, it's all good news that the parks are working with us like that. Um, you know, it's just annoying because we can't ever just sit still and do cool things. We have to just keep fixing, you know, storm damage and park damage. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, okay. Uh, I think that's all I really have for courses, except for we will need a uh, course director for uh, uh, Reedy Creek. Um, Hornet's Nest, too, right? Um, Ethan said he'd, he'd take uh, Hornet's Nest. Okay. Um, so we don't want to stretch Ethan too thin. So um, it was, I'm going to make sure I, you know, watch that. But um, when you, and I, I don't know, I know Mike's had some hard, you know, some stuff, some personal stuff. And so, you know, I'll try to do a little bit more out at, at Nevin. And Pat Bowles is going to help out out there too. He's got some stuff going on there. Um, hey Mark. Yeah. 
What about uh, Kevin Bomagin at Reedy? Well, he keeps complaining about you never giving him a chainsaw. So if you give him the materials, <laughs> I'm sure he'll do it. Well, I've got a chainsaw, and I'm not going to take it with me. So, you know, <laughs> we can have it back. Dude, that chainsaw was uh, – there's a lot of history in that chainsaw. Oh, I know. And – he always, you know, he wanted to borrow for three days, and then there was stuff coming down, and I could never get a hold of him for like two months. That's why I didn't give it back to him. But with me oh, moving, gotta, I mean, there, he's got like seven twin brothers. All you got to do is wait out at a disc golf course for thirty minutes, and he'll show up. It doesn't matter which one you're at. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah, yeah so I want to speak to one more thing too about U disc on the courses. I'm a member of the U disc ambassador app. I get the uh, better test. And we can actually request to have an administrator for a course or courses so that people can't go in and change our layouts and change what we are shown on UDISC. We can actually authorize it with, you know, somebody in the club or several people in the club to be authorized to do the change. Yeah, I think that would be great to um, set the layouts that we want. And if someone else wants to do something, then they can make their own custom deal but for there to be you know 12 or 15 layouts floating out there you know people come in town they have no idea what they're doing yeah and that administrator can go through it gives them the power to delete or make something inactive and then to you know put in a permanent layout i'd love for someone you know in the in our 500 members to to step up and take some of that on that would be you know we all have a lot on our plate so it'd be good if Hopefully someone watches this and wonders what they can do that doesn't involve dragging trees around. You know, I don't mind, I don't mind doing that. I can take that on if we can get that set up. And I like that if we could get like a, an official designation. Yeah. Where if they go to UDISC, they could say, okay, that's the official long, the official short, the official worlds. And then like Mark said, we can, people want to do their crazy layouts. They can have those. It'd be great if we could get the officials to populate at the top. Right. right. And then everybody could scroll down to the, the BS, but. I'd be fine with, uh, you know, again, it's, it's about getting all the changes to the courses that we're making finalized. Um, but I can certainly start with the courses right now that are not experiencing uh, redesign and then we can update as needed. So I, I don't mind doing that. Well, all right. what, if, what if we put like in the title, cause I know you can change the title of each layout. You can call it like the official CDGC layout, like yeah. whatever the course is and then dash official CDGC layout. So everybody who was playing, knows that it's the you know the club's sanctioned layout it's, yeah it's our intention for you to play this is what we want you to play if you play longs this is what we want you to play because that that's good too because if we need um well i don't know enough about you disc you know that the thing is with so many courses that we maintain something's always going up or down and and i don't know if that changes the integrity of the of the data for the for the course or the holes or or what but you know i don't i don't know how that all you know get rid of a hole because they're you know like eight, 18 at nevin that power pole is going to fall into the creek and i finally you know i've been bugging them about it but eventually they might need to do work on it might need to shut down hole 18 for a while i'm just saying so we would take that off of u disc you know and there'd be a 17 hole course for a little while you know, does that affect things? I would like to be at that level where people know, okay, I'm walking up to 17. I'm not going to throw down on some construction crew, you know, on, on 18. I don't, I don't know if we can get to that detail. Um, it's my understanding that we can actually get um, administrative powers on it that people can't come in and just set a illegal uh, layout for it. It'll be a lot like our signage issue you know, of being notified of when things are going to happen so that we can actually, you know, let Dave know or whoever is going to be doing it so that they can, you know, make the changes to UDISC. Okay. And Mark, it's, you know, UDISC doesn't calculate uh, player rating anymore. Um, it's more, you know, what you're saying is, is the, the long-term statistics of a course, right? Like I, I just shot a 55 on that course. That means that I performed this way. It's more just – your rounds statistics and tracking your specific statistics over time, as in okay. cir circle you know, one putting. You know, you're not worried like about like, like if we get rid of hole uh, nine at Kilbourne, 
then that means that all those holes following it, you know, would the data for hole 10 would now, right. it would actually be a new hole, it'd be hole nine. Does that data carry along? Or people are like looking at it and saying, you know, this whole, because I find it valuable if we can go through the data and say, you know, this hole plays, you know, like hole two at Nevin, you know, if it's playing as a 2.2, or a 2.4 or something, maybe that's something we need to look at. I don't know. I'm just saying, but if something changes, then you get, you mess up all your data. And so we can't use it. You know, if we wanted to, if we wanted a data mine to see how different things are playing, but that's, that's a huge, that's a great point. I, I, maybe I need to dig deeper into you disc. I wasn't aware again, like I said, of it tracking an SSA for a hole or a round on a course, it more tracks, just your statistics as in Mark Uther played 10 rounds this month and his circle one putting average was this, as opposed to, you know, and you're going on to hole seven and Nevin, and that is the third hardest hole on the course. I like, I mean, that you're exactly right. If we could get that data, that's, it's huge to tell us how our courses are playing. I don't know if you just track that or not. I, I need to look a little deeper into the app. Yeah, get, get find that out because it because we yeah. always do argue, you know, as we set up tournaments, people wonder why we make decisions that we make. And one big decision that you make is if everybody's going to score the same, if no one can get a two and not many people are going to get a four, then what's the point of the hole altogether, right? And so right. if you look yep. and you see, and you see the standard deviation for some hole, hey, maybe, maybe this hole could use a basket move 30 or 40 feet left or right or front or back or a new tee pad for tournaments that does something to it, you know, and, and then we can justify, you know, we're not just here. We're, we're here to make the whole experience good. You know, we want to have good scoring separation. We want to have good, clean, safe courses, um, you know, all that. So that, you know, we're not just doing things willy nilly. But right now it's sort of, I think that you know, feel and, and, you know, what, you know, maybe I feel is different than what, you know, Joe or, you know, or Jeremy Coling might you know, feel or something, you know, so it'd be better to have the data. I'm pretty sure that's something to look into. I'm pretty sure that you just has all that information on the backside. I don't know that it's available to the, you know, user that's actually playing it. I can make that request and find out about it. And um, there's another thing I wanted to mention too, and it might inter interest any of our um, league directors is that UDISC is coming out with a beta of doing live scoring for leagues. I petitioned today to put in an, an application for the Kilbourne League as a test, and I haven't got received back an email, but it's cool because if you do UDISC scoring on it, there's no charge, it's all live. Um, you don't have to come back in and you know, calculate everything on a spreadsheet. Everything's turned right in there. It's right in a database, you know, that you're able to use. Phil, could you help me partition that for Fryam Dubs? Because we've been doing scorecardless rounds from um, from about a year ago. So whenever we got leagues going again, I would love to have that as an option too, since we're not even using scorecards. Absolutely. I've got the link for it. I can put an application in and just – I'll put your information and I'll uh, put your email in so that when your application gets approved, you'll get the, uh, the notification. Word. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Yep. So I'm on the app right now. And again, I think they took all of that, you know, per hole. So, you know, you just used to be able to calculate your player rating based on something that they had imported for that course whatever it might be. But again, it's, I think they've moved away from that and now they are just tracking your statistics on the round, meaning how many times did you hit a fairway? How many times were you off the fairway? How many times did you get up and down from being, you know, your scramble, things like that, your individual performance as opposed to the course's whole statistics. So I don't, I don't think UDISC offers that currently. No. It'd be no, great if they did. I think what Phil was saying is that it's, all that data is in the back end. We could potentially request it for our own purposes, not for the, the players. Sure. And if that's the case, then heck yeah. And, and Tony had mentioned that UDISC does, can archive courses too. So that information does not have to be lost when we change the course. Um, I know the PDGA app 
did course ratings, but I never knew that yeah. you did it. I'm pretty sure that was the PDGA that had the SSE, like an estimated uh, rating. And again, I mean, it's, you know, I don't know what good data would be on a casual round. Um, you know, obviously, I think the preferred statistics would be PDGA rated round, something that's official. Yeah, 100% agreed. Okay. Um, good, infor good information either way. So let's, uh, I think that's all I had for courses, unless anybody had any questions. Um, I don't have any new information for here. Um, anybody watching this online or whatever can, you know, e again, email us at board at charlottedc.com if you have specific questions and we can answer it in our next meeting. Um, so as far as opening up leagues, uh, Jim's got the biggest league. So uh, at this point, so what is your, I'm looking at the phases um, for North Carolina. It says that phase three is, four to six weeks after phase two. I think they're, the news came out that they're opening up restaurants to 50% capacity um, Friday, well, potentially. The big, the, the big news for us, I just, I'm just reading it, the governor this afternoon has now expanded outdoor gatherings to 25. Indoor is still 10. So technically we could go ahead and do leagues, but we would have to cap the participation at 25. Or could you stagger? Uh, uh, what do you mean? Well, so you can cap at 25, but if 35 people show up, then you're turning 10 away, which means you still had 35 show up. So would could you do a – could leagues do a, you know, 25 people start at a certain time, and then an hour later there's another start time? You know, I, I don't know. I'm just – 25 is fine. I'm just, just throwing out ideas. I don't know. But Yeah, I mean, yeah. as long as – I guess I see what you're saying. It would complicate things logistically to be able to have comparative scoring between two different starting times or starting groups, but well, you're the only something one, to look at. You're the only hey, league I think it probably matters at this point, right? You know, where it's – Well, I don't know. Kil Kilburn League was running – Phil Kilburn League was running in the 40s, wasn't it? Yep. That's not 85 to 100, though. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, I, I got a, I got a suggestion. I mean, speaking of Kilburn, um, if uh, you're speaking of staggered, maybe instead of doing the same course, just to kind of follow the guidelines, maybe if you know, um, you do jiggle, you do your your uh, if it's 25, and then if there is extra, you know, Jim, you start at your 5:30. Time and once you're cut off, and we've got enough daylight to where you could get a 6:30 start time at Kilbourne with an additional 25 cap, um, and and that way it's not stepping on your toes. The elite happen if so, uh, you know somebody was able to jump over to Kilbourne and take the additional personnel, and then they play their own kind of smaller, you know, league yeah. with a different type of payout, you know, same structure. Yeah, I mean, ba you mean what you well, I mean, really with the proximity of of Sugar and Kilburn, we could even run the two leagues simultaneously, and there you got 50 people being able to play. Yeah, you just go wherever you want. Just say, hey, if you're worried about, yeah. if you're worried about it, then show up really early. <laughs> you know, I mean, what we're going to do is get into the situation of pre-registering for leagues. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought about that too. Where if it was pre-registration so just like any other you're treating a, a league like a tournament you got to sign up for it you get 25 slots typically you'll have 10 percent no show so you end up with 23 people you know that's fine so we need to as a board probably mirror the social distancing requirements for the pdga but at this point we it looks like we could probably tell bailey glow they can uh continue and um in tom's league um and i don't know if ethan was still planning on doing singles and and uh and the kilborn league um it's right 25 person max right so those are leagues that we can you know three on a card or whatever you know whatever the whatever we'd make it does that 
Does anybody have any issues with telling those four leagues? There's also a fifth league. There's a fifth league. Friday. I am. Friday, yeah. Yeah, but it, it always rains. You're probably still running. No, up. actually, this year was like was was scheduled to be pretty awesome. I don't think I had to cancel maybe like one. This so, was it was going pretty well until you know. <laughs> um. So, I think the biggest issue would be twenty five people running to to try to get to Am League. So. So, you know, I guess we can just leave that, put that on Jim's shoulders, however you want to do that. But are we okay with starting the other leagues if we have requirements for social distancing and capping at 25? I think so. it, it, fo it follows from what I'm reading here, we would be, we meet the requirements to be able to do that. Okay. And then, yeah, and I would, I would need to have all that to just to be, you know, cover our bases to send to the parks department and say, hey, we're looking to open up our leagues. Here's the five or six leagues we're going to open up, including women's leagues. Sorry, I forgot that one as well. Um, and here's the leagues we're going to, planning on opening up. Here's our, our plan for that. Um, here's what we'll, prov we'll provide, um, you know, and, and here's what we're going to do and, and how we're going to cap it following all the guidelines from the states and, and from our governing, well, PDGA doesn't really govern our leagues, but still yes. it's, a, it's a good uh, benchmark, maybe. Um, so does anybody have any problems with kind of figuring out how to start some of this stuff up next week? Um, my, no, no problem with starting it up. I'll be gone. I'm out of town next week, so I wouldn't begin doing anything until June. Okay. I mean, who knows? It might be 50 by June anyway, so. And, okay. Um, and as far as doing, uh, you know, like the payout after the league, so you don't have too many people around. I mean, you could also, um, you know, coordinate with another round, and people could just go there and pick up their winnings too. True. All right. Well, we'll work as a board to put together the guidelines and and get them out to the tournament. Um, directors and then you know person is, as we've seen this it comes down to your own personal feeling on the issue if you have a there, there might be some tournament directors out there that didn't don't want to run a league in this environment you know so that's up to them yeah. so we'll get uh we'll get the uh, information out to them and uh, i'm sure people are but popping at the bits of playing some um real stuff so Apparently, Josh is trying to – he's trying – I don't know what – can you hear us, Josh? No, oh, Josh, we've lost your microphone. You've got no microphone. Thank, yeah, Thank you. You. Oh, no, giant Josh hands. Headphones. You're not on mute, so I don't know. Take the headphones out, Josh. Take the, take the headphones out. Unplug the headphones. Got to unplug them from your device. You're muted now. <laughs> You're muted. Oh my God, dude! Unmute. I, I'm trying to unmute him. Okay. There it is. Am I good now? Yeah. There he is. There we go. So yeah, I had to do the headphones because of the rain. The rain was so loud, I couldn't hear anybody. <laughs> I should tell that to my wife. Oh, I can't hear you. It's raining too hard. <laughs> um okay so we I talked about hear anybody, we talked about um bringing bring back leave uh anything else so we talked about finances membership courses talked a little bit about tournaments and then bringing back leagues talk about the uh uh back yeah, about Sorry, I didn't get that, Phil. Okay. Aaron Wiggins is wanting to run a trilogy challenge at Reedy Creek, July 18th. I sent a put a thing on Slack. Um, he's wanting to observe CDC guidelines, you know, a virtual players meeting, blah, 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 tea times, three to a card. Um, you know, and I, I'm sure that, you know, if 
what Jim said about going to 25 people, you know, and if it's four to six weeks later, he might just fall in there to be able to run more than 25 people. Well, if he's doing um, flexible start, then it's not 25 people, it's, you know, right? If it's, right. A three day, well, if it's a three-disc challenge, it's only three people at a time, as long as, as long as he doesn't have, like, 35 people come back after for like some award ceremony or something if he's just you know hey you came in your score is not good enough and you don't have to and you never you don't have to come back for anything then then i don't see why that's a why he would was, that would encroach he was going to run it as tea times and, yeah so uh, that, that, that's only yeah. three people at a time yeah you just tell them that they can only show up you know, 15 minutes before their tea time and they got to go home after they're done or whatever, you know? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought, but I, I, would, uh, I was not going to put something on the calendar and prove it without talking to everybody about this. Sounds like a perfect way to run a tournament. Cool. I'll let him know. What else? No, it looks like Josh I, I is going back. Josh question. is going back to the headphones, and we can't hear him again. Sorry, can you hear me? Am I back now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Awesome. All right. So it, it's very, very faint. I can still hear you guys, but um, I guess let me just interject right now. While I still got the table. Uh, there's a couple things on the website that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, Let's see, uh, the forums at the bottom of the page, we still have a link to that. I I'll guess that would that. probably yeah. need to be removed eventually. Um, uh, also, the website still has Tom listed as the volunteer coordinator. He is, he is not, correct? <laughs> no. Uh, Tom is not, Phil, yeah. Phil is now the volunteer coordinator. So we need to, Phil we need is to change that. Right? Uh, also, the board info is, is still not up to date. We've got BT and BK, Brian Kilmore, still listed as board members. All right, so I'm going to need board member bios, right, from Phil, um, uh, Joe. Phil and Joseph? Yeah. Yeah, just Phil and Joe. So I need your bios and a picture. Submit me your picture. You don't want me to pick one for you. Yeah, he'll submit it and then he'll pick his own, pick one that he wants for you, and then you'll yell at him. And That's only for you because you're special. And then you'll still put up the bad one. Quick <laughs> edit too. Uh, Phil is the event coordinator. I am the co I am the volunteer coordinator. That's correct. Okay, so yeah, DG listed as volunteer coordinator. Um, also, the financial report listed on the website is from November 2019. May want to try and update that if we can. I'm making a punch list of all this stuff, Josh. While you're looking at it, Josh, will you look at a course and see if the map comes up? I, I'm actually not looking at it. This is just notes from earlier today okay. when I was looking at it. Map gotcha. thing is janky. Uh, I don't the know map, what to the do map looked that. Great. The map looked good, though. The map looked good. It was broken tonight. It, it yeah. broke for me tonight when I was looking at it. I don't okay. know. I'm going to look into that, too. The whole map interface is like totally messed up once google maps change their api or whatever it's wonky for sure because it would come up and you would see it for a split second then it would go away and say data not available sorry yeah. go ahead josh uh that's all i had really just the uh we'll the forms links we don't have those anymore uh now we're gonna have dg listed as volunteer coordinator uh yep. board info updated and then financial reports updated if we can accommodate that Yep, I can fix all that by the weekend. Excellent. Karen, did you have something? Sorry. Sorry, yes, I did. Um, I was trying to remember what my question was. You got me all out of there, or thinking of the website. Um, and I can help you with that, Holly. Hold on one second, sir. Let me think of that. And if I think of it, I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> Is anybody else hearing Jeopardy music play in the background right now? <laughs> <laughs> 
That's got to be Jim's house. Nope. Uh, <laughs> hey, Mark. Are you okay? I'm stuck here. Yeah. I, 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 I don't remember my, my question. Sorry, I didn't get any of that, Phil. Are you okay with me taking off and the gas can and, you know, to another round along with the uh, I can drop that off? Yeah, you can drop anything you want off in another round. That's fine. That's okay, what uh, Ethan did. Yeah, I don't want to move it, you know, with me. I want it to go to use. Yes. I got a bunch of stuff to pick up there, so let me know when you put it there, and I'll do that. Okay. Is, is, is it better to do drop off at another round, or should we just drop off at the storage container? I mean, I don't know if we want to put too much on those guys' plate as far as, you know, holding stuff for the club. They're doing a lot for us, but I just don't want to, you know, overstep our boundaries. Yeah, not to mention, they don't have a ton of space. Yeah, if you want to put it in the storage, you need to do that too, Phil. That's over by – Or just bring it to my house. <laughs> the storage okay. unit is at Rensky. Yeah. Up here in Kannapolis, I'm busy packing. We're actually moving. So we'll, we'll talk about it offline. I'll send you a text. Uh, it's just that, you know, we've had from, you know, three years' work left a few. Okay, yeah, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it outside of this. All right, what are we doing now? I was going to stop this recording. I think Karen has something to talk about. I just, I just have one quick question. Um, with everything going on, I know that there's certain tournaments going on at, like, private courses. Now, with those private courses, do they want to have them sanctioned? And if it's private is that going to have anything to do with us or need to like go through us at all or is it just like pga no. and be fine nothing to do with us no. okay. Norma Town, brackets all that that's on their own yeah okay the, the, only thing, make sure. the only thing is that you know if they want the same consideration back then they need to reach out and say hey we're gonna run this event would you guys mind not running something on the same day? And we can, you know, we want to work with all those places, but, you know, yeah. our insurance, our, you know, liability, none of that stuff has anything to do with those courses, nor does. Okay. You know, I, yeah, I figured that. I just wanted to make sure they didn't need to, like, buy anything by anybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to stop recording this thing. Okay, let me uh, let me Dave. I got a question for you. I'm going to need to get uh, some more disc pretty soon from Innova. I'm going to have to order from Dynamic as well.